Hello everyone, I'm Jenna Nelson. I'm an application specialist here at Blue Marble Geographics. And today I'm answering your question, how can I add custom online data sources in Global Mapper? You may have been wondering, how can I add uh, WCS, WMS, Esri REST service, uh, any type of online streaming data service into Global Mapper. These are very handy services for bringing data into your workspace. Today, I'll show you a few examples um, of each of these types of services uh, so that you'll be able to add your own services to Global Mapper. Let's get started. So if you're starting from an empty workspace, you could click the online sources button, or if you already have data in your workspace, then you'll want to find the Connect to Online Data tool. You might be familiar with this tool already. Um, there's a lot of great built-in sources that you can access, to bring data in. But today we're gonna to talk about how you can add other sources so that they'll be saved in this list for future use. You could add sources from an XML file, but typically the easiest way is through the URL. So let's start by clicking the Add New Source button. Here we have a drop down of all the different types of services that we can use in Global Mapper. So we can access the uh, Entwine LiDAR tiles service, uh, easy way to bring in LiDAR. We have access to Esri REST feature service, very popular service for vector features. Um, we have a bunch of different tiles type of services, and we'll look at an example of one of those later. We have WCS, the web coverage service, great for raster data, especially elevation data. Um, we have WFS, that's good for vector features again. And then the very popular WMS, web map service, and the tiled version of that as well. So we'll look at a couple examples so you can see how each of these different service types uh, works in Global Mapper. Let's start with EPT LiDAR tiles. So we need the URL of the JSON definition of the particular um, area that you want to bring in. This is the USGS Entwine website where you can find the uh, particular tile that you will need for your area of interest. So I can search this, I can uh, put in my county name and I can then get to this EPT link. This is the JSON URL that I mentioned before. And I can just copy this URL and bring that over into Global Mapper. So if I click OK, I'll now be prompted to enter a source name. So I'll give it an appropriate name. I'll name it Androscoggin County uh, LiDAR, and that will be saved for future use. I could add it to a folder or category. Um, I'll make a My Sources folder, and we'll add it to that. So you could actually uh, organize them into the existing categories, or you can add your own folders. All right, so now I can see my My Sources um, folder and my LiDAR data set. And I'll click Connect here in a minute. But first, I want to select an area to download because I don't need to download the whole area. So an easy way to do this is to just put in an address. This works for international addresses. Um, and a distance, so I'll get 0.5 kilometers within this city and click Connect. So quickly, the uh, appropriate area loads into the workspace. And we can see that this LiDAR data has actually been classified. That's why it's color coded. You can look at it in 3D. We can color it by elevation. Um, but we can't actually edit this data. Notice that it's red in the control center. That red signifies that this is view only at this point. 
If you need to edit this data, you can right click and export that layer, export it as LAS or LAZ. That way you have an offline copy of it that you can edit. I won't export that right now. Um, but let's go ahead and look at another type of feature service. So I'm going to click add new source and um, brings us back to our list. Let's look at an uh, Esri REST feature service. It's a popular, um, widely used service. Now we can either put in a layer URL or the service base URL. Here's what those web pages look like. So here's a directory. Um, I've got geodetic control from the NGS, and this is a serve a uh, whole service page. But there are sub layers, so if I wanted to just grab one of these layers, I could click on that and use that URL just for that individual layer. I'm going to use the um, top layer here, the map server URL and bring that back to Global Mapper. So that's our base URL. And when I click Get Available Service Layers, I should get all those sub layers that we just saw on the other page. So these are different uh, geodetic control stations. And I can choose now which layer I want to bring in, or if I want to bring in a group of them. I'm going to group bring in the city level group. Again, I name that file, name that source, I'm gonna name it city level cores and um, add it to my sources. Okay, so we can see that all of those layers are now added in here. If I try to get that top level um, and I connect to that, Unfortunately, I can't connect to that one. I do need to choose one of the individual layers to load. So I'll choose the vertical control stations and hit connect. I've decided to load just within my current screen bounds. So I can see if there's any points within this area. So I click connect and we should see a few vertical control stations that have been imported. So we can see in the control center, that layer is listed. And we can use the feature info tool actually to view the attributes. Those have come in along with the um, coordinates. These features are interesting because they have actually a URL in the attributes. Um, I can choose to view just the, the attributes like this, or I can actually navigate to that URL. If I close my feature information and relaunch the tool, notice I get the choice of just navigating to that URL. If I click OK, that URL will pop up in my default browser and bring me right to that page. So when this page loads up, we'll see that it brought us right to the NGS data sheet for that point. So that's just a really handy uh, feature of having the URLs within the attributes. Not all uh, points will have that type of feature, but I figured that would be cool to show you. All right, moving on, let's do another source type. Let's look at the tiles types. I'm gonna choose the OpenStreetMap tiles. And here is the tile source definition dialog. So basically here, we need to start by specifying the base URL, um, but you could actually customize the, the URL with the parameters for getting the particular zoom level, um, et cetera, for a, a particular tile. What I'm gonna do instead though, is I'm gonna use the parameters down here, lower in the dialog, and I'm gonna set a fairly uh, low resolution zoom, right? that will load quickly up just for demonstration, but you could choose whatever um, zoom level you need for your project. I have some other parameters such as I can sometimes choose my projection to download in. I can set my bounding box for the source. So I've set the bounding box um, to Eastern Hemisphere. 
and I'm going to save this source name here. All right. So remember, I specified um, the zoom level of the tiles and I've specified a bounce. Now, if I click connect right now, notice it does not load because if you remember right, I'm actually uh, in the wrong hemisphere. So I'm actually going to switch to a different option and download the entire data set. Again, since I specified a low resolution tiles, that shouldn't take very long to load. I click connect and then this will uh, stream into the workspace. So I'll now move over to the other side of the world where we can see the OpenStreetMap there has loaded up. You can see Australia. If I zoom in, um, you start to notice that this is a fairly low resolution. Again, we only downloaded a particular resolution of the tiles. We're not streaming in different um, layers. So we can see it is a little bit low resolution for this particular zoom level. Let's look at one or two more sources that we can add. Moving on now um, to the web coverage service. The web coverage service is another raster uh, type of service, but this one will give us actually um, the individual cell values instead of just like uh, pixel colors, like an image. So it's great for elevation layers. And in my example, I'm going to pull up some bathymetric data, actually. Um, so we'll load up the bathymetric layer that will be giving us some data around um, where the area that we've zoomed into off the coast of Australia. This service needs the get capabilities address or get capabilities URL. So for the service that I found, I actually found it through a portal called GeoSeer. And if I bring over that uh, page, you'll see that uh, it's very clear that we have our different source types available. We have WCS, WMS. Um, again, we're doing WCS. So we want to make sure to get the get capabilities URL for the WCS. Copy that URL and bring that over to Global Mapper. And again, I'll click get list of available data layers to see what's within this server. Actually, quite a few different layers on this server, uh, which could be the case for different uh, WCS that you're looking at. So you want to make sure to find the layer that you want to download. I'm going to find the bathymetric layer. And we'll bring that into the workspace. So I'll click OK. Again, you can, you can uh, add it to a folder, or if you don't add it to a folder, it just adds it to the bottom of the list. And... All right. So again, for this one, I'm going to just do the current screen bounds. But something interesting about the WCS services is that you are actually downloading this file. You're not just going to be streaming it. So we have some options with this prompt. We can choose a file format to download as. I'm choosing GeoTIFF because that'll be good for elevation. Global Mapper can interpret that as an elevation layer. Um, sometimes we have different timestamps for different uh, imagery from different times, things like that. But in this case, I'll um, apply these settings and download at that resolution. I have to supply a file path, a file name. Again, this is being downloaded. But after I do that, as soon as it downloads, it will automatically pop up in the workspace that so will be able to see that layer. Again, this is a TIFF. So Global Mapper is asking us, is this elevation data or an image? So I'm going to say, yes, this is elevation data. And we confirm the unit as meters. Click OK. And voila, we have our bathymetric layer um, loaded up in Global Mapper that we just downloaded from the WCS service.
I can turn on hill shading. Um, I can use the path profile tool, anything that we, you would normally do with elevation layers in Global Mapper. Again, this one has been saved already to your machine, but if you make any edits to it and you want to save the new version, then you'll want to make sure to export that. So again, you can right click on the layer and export that individual layer if needed. All right, let's look at one more um, feature service for bringing in data into Global Mapper. I've unloaded my workspace, so I'm starting from scratch again. And we're gonna look at a WMS layer. So this is the Gebco uh, WMS website, and we're gonna be able to access some uh, imagery here. We're going to use the get capabilities URL to bring in this service. And I'm going to find the particular request that I would like. So it, it points to an XML document basically, but we wanna take that link address and copy that to bring over into Global Mapper. Now we're gonna look at uh, polar regions. So I'm also grabbing the EPSG code for the area. I'm gonna configure my workspace to that particular projection, and that will just make sure that the data comes in smoothly. All right, so now let's add this new source. Again, this is a web map service, and we'll put that get capabilities URL in here at the top. Uh, for service name, we can usually just put WMS, and the rest will be autofilled. And when I click get list of available data layers, we can see a whole list of layers that are available with this service. So I can actually take just this top layer here to bring in all of those sub layers. I'm going to click no to combine all of these layers into a single source, and that will help me access them all quickly later. So I'll save this source name as my North Polar Grid. And I'm going to bring in the whole data set, but I'm gonna show you another trick. I'm actually gonna adjust the detail level to less, and this can be handy if it's taking a long time to stream, and you, especially if you're not sure which area you want to import yet, and you wanna be able to pan around quickly. Uh, I'm gonna click no to load each layer separately, because remember there were multiple layers in that service. And that will actually give me in the control center these different uh, layers all grouped together. So again, this was, uh, I, I used that detail level to bring in a lower resolution, but typically you might want to keep that at the default or set that to what you need for your project. And I like to show with these layers that you can actually use the feature info tool to get some more information. If I click on this layer, I can actually get the elevation values um, for that ice surface. And if I right click, I can actually send the feature info down to the next layer below, and that will get me the elevation for the bed surface that's the layer below that. Not all layers, um, not all WMS service layers will have that information. So that's something to be aware of, but it is handy if it is there. So yeah, that was just a quick tour of how to use um, different web services to bring in data to Global Mapper. Thanks for watching. And as always, if you have questions, write to us at geohelp at bluemarblegeo.com.